todos. This is my Lisa LS210. This thing is awesome so far. The arms are so thick, it has plenty of strength. These plates are decent up here. I haven't had any problems up there. I was kind of thinking this would be kind of a weak point, but it's not. So far, this thing has rolled and done cartwheels for 30, 40 yards, and it takes it like a champ. Usually, I break the propellers and have to replace them, but that's to be expected. Anyway, this is the LS210. Today, look what arrived, the LS180. And I'm kind of anxious to see this one and how it compares. This comes in a cardboard box wrapped in this nice foamy packaging. Ooh, nice. Nice and pretty. Anyway, let's see here. Oh yeah, forgot this one also comes with props. That's good, these are the four inch bullnose props and I think they're 40, 45 props. So these would be good, but the bad thing is these are the only 40, 45 bullnose props I have. I have a whole mess of the not bullnose props that I need to break. So maybe I'll give them away to race. Anyway, this is the plates that it comes with. Kind of looks like the same as the other one where it has the main plate and the two sides for the camera mount. The uh, main plate, again, the hold looks a little bigger than the other ones. I don't know why they would make this one bigger other than to make it, you know, unique, I guess. And it looks like it also has kind of the same little weak points back here. But they probably just took the other frame and just shrunk it. So that's kind of, I guess, what you get. Uh, it has a power distribution board here. And this one has a LED output down here in the bottom and some other outputs up here. We'll look at those in a minute. Uh, spacers and the nylon screws. I said they were nylon screws, they're actually metal screws. These look like they're all the same parts as the LS210, just in a smaller form factor. Like I said, here's the uh, power distribution board, and it has the uh, LED output down here, and this is going to be the uh, same output voltage that as your input voltage is on the side. Up here on the top, it has a 12 volt output, and this would be for like your video transmitter, and a 5 volt output, which output which would be for your uh, flight board. And I have I've had pretty good luck with this on my other quadcopter, on my LS210. The only thing I did on this one is I've, I've had the wires come out the sides. Let me get on this side where you can see the red a little better. The wires come out and then go back under the board, and I hate the look that this has. So on this one, when I build it out, I'm gonna to try to put the uh, wires coming in like this from the inside, and so they all route back you know, to the inside of the board instead of outside and then under. I don't know what that's gonna to do to the rest of the layout, but I think it'll look a lot better because I hate the look of the other one with, the, with them coming out the sides. So before I get too far along in this build, I was going to tell you a couple of things. First of all, the screws that go into these legs are very short. And so when you crash, this thing has a tendency to strip out those screws. It'd be kind of nice if these were a little bit shorter, maybe half this length, then they wouldn't have so much, you know, uh, ability to bend those screws or rip them out and you might think oh I get longer screws well don't do that because you don't want this thing impacting and then giving you you know even more to twist on this arm to break it it's better to break or lose these than it is to break an arm but let's see this is the uh, 210 here and you can tell one of my legs is already missing up here it's out in the middle of some field somewhere so here's the uh, 180 frame stacked up on top of this one and you can see here it's a little bit shorter on the arms and uh, a little bit shorter back here too. It's almost the same length. Let me see if I can get the front of it lined up real well there. And the back is, yeah, it's about the same, well, the body's the same length anyway. It looks like they moved the arm, the back arms up a little bit to make it a little bit shorter. But the, uh, but the comparison is pretty good. They look pretty, look like brothers is what they look like. So here's the frame assembled, and like I said, it has these two little side mounts that can mount to a camera if you have a side mounting camera with the screws that go into the side. It also has this plate inside here, and it looks like it's angled about the same as the other one, probably 40 degrees, and you can mount your camera to that instead. If you did, you wouldn't have to have these plates here. You can still leave them there because they look cool as long as you can fit them back in. But uh, yeah, other than that, this thing looks just like the LS210. It has these little uh, rubber things on here that I'm sure I'll lose or they'll break off and I'll lose them in the field before I actually really get to enjoy them. Let me get some measurements and weight off of this. The LS210 had three millimeter main plate and this one has, surprise, surprise, three millimeter main plate. The upper plate comes in at one and a half. That's pretty good, better than one. And uh, the space in between these two here, let me get this put on here, coming in at 
36 millimeters of space inside. So you got a lot of space. Even in here, you got I have the power distribution board mounted on these spacers. You'd have to have your own set of spacers to go up there on the next level and then your own uh, screws to hold down your flight board. But you still have plenty of room inside here. It's it's actually huge compared to the 160s I've been looking at. Now the one thing I did on this one is I put the uh, power wire on this side and the antenna on this side and I wish I would have flipped these over because I'm so used to having my batteries uh, cables bend over the right hand side and now this is on the wrong side. So when I put this one together I made sure the battery connector is on this side and what I actually had to do is I wrapped some electrical tape around this to make it a little bit tighter and I just put wedged it in there and that, that works pretty well. I was going to use a rubber grommet but finding one that's the right size was kind of a pain so a little bit of black masking to or a black electrical tape on there fixed that problem and that was surely by accident after I shredded this because it crashed and went to the propeller and the propeller cut it up a little bit anyway I'm doing this first next time wrap some electrical tape on it and then stick it inside the the uh, battery wire holder there and this is for your antenna just like I showed in the other one and it has this uh, zip tie here so when you put your antenna inside here the, those are zip tie holders and it goes through and holds your antenna in and then there's another set of zip tie holders back here and those are also to hold your video transmitter in place and because there's <laughs> really not too good of a way to mount those if you're not using zip ties but this makes it easy having the holes here already um, in place for you I'll put the weight of the LS210 up on the screen but this LS180 it's coming in at 101, 101 grams even. And that's with all the powder distribution board and all the screws in place. Like I mentioned before, the there's a little bit of controversy with the VDQ 210 as to what size it really is. But this one here, if I line up the middle down here on the zero up here, it looks like it comes in about, what is that? Okay, get this in this view of the screen here. Let me get it lined up. There we go. The, it looks like it comes in about 189 maybe. Let me see if I got the other end lined up okay. Yeah, I guess so. Comes in about one, well probably, yeah, probably like 188 or 189. So an LS 180 is 189 millimeters. Close enough, right? When you go to put propellers on this, you're gonna wanna use something with a high KV. If you use these 1806 2300s like this one, you're gonna get okay performance and it's gonna spin uh, four inch propellers pretty easily. But you I, just save yourself a lot of trouble. And then what I would recommend are some 1806 uh, 2600 or 2700 motors if you can find them. I know there's some places now that are making 1806 3200 kV motors. 3200 would just be insane. And I think the prices on those are pretty high right now just because they're not very popular yet. But you want to get a high kV motor because these 1804, 1806 motors, they can spin four inch propellers real well. If you don't have good four inch, good motors on here, it's going to spin these things very weak and you will not get the the performance that you think you're sh you should be getting out of it besides i have 1806 motors on my ls210 and it does real well with the uh, five inch propellers but if i have to drop down to four inch propellers all i'm doing is losing you know an inch of propeller and so it's going to be a lot slower overall so here's the ls180 next to its big brother the ls210 and if they're sitting here it's hard to notice a big difference Here's the LS80 sitting next to a ZMR250. Easily tell the difference between these two. So this is the LS180. I think I'm actually going to build this one out. I got to order some higher KV 1806 motors or maybe some 2204 higher KV motors. Anything higher than 2300. Preferably like 26 or 27 or even those 3200s if I can make myself eat the cost on those. But gosh, that hurts. Anyway, LS180. From Banggood, if you have any questions about this, leave them in the comments. I'll try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.